Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder, treason, and plot. I know of no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. Hello, we are Anonymous. The following video was brought to our attention. It makes the assertion Anonymous is supporting the Ron Paul 2012 presidential campaign. I'm Congressman Ron Paul. My goal has always been to promote the cause of liberty and to obey the Constitution. I plan to do that as president as well. Free to love a citizens. We are anonymous. We are a peaceful revolution. We stand for freedom and liberty. We have come to warn you that our freedoms are being taken away. Join us. Register to vote for Ron Paul. Fight for your freedom. Fight for your liberty. Anyone can be anonymous. However, it is clear the video wants people to believe Anonymous as a group. The entire internet hate machine supports Ron Paul. This is incorrect. The video description reads, The hack of this group called Anonymous is throwing support behind Ron Paul for the 2012 Republican presidential primary and general election. A mirror of this video is worth encouraging people to support Ron Paul and get your gear today. Plus 10% of your purchase will be donated to Ron Paul's campaign chest. Ron Paul constitutionally correct. 2012. There are supporters of Ron Paul among Anon, but that is not the same as Anonymous supporting Ron Paul for president. The growing support of Ron Paul in and outside of Anonymous is because of a well-calculated talking points by the Ron Paul Puerto Rico campaign and ignorance about Ron Paul's politics and past. Many people drop Ron Paul like a hot potato once his complete history is known. As damning as this history is, the Ron Paul Puerto Rico machine is a force to be reckoned with. Its ability to seduce people by the simple expedite of telling them what they desperately want to hear is cult-like and not to be underestimated. It is the art of using the truth to tell lies. But it can be fought with facts. Consider Ron Paul's past and present positions. He claims to support the Constitution. This is repeated to imply the Constitution is not being supported right now. This is dishonest, but reveals a clue to the real message of the Ron Paul campaign. The support of the Constitution is first written and unamended, in a time when wives and children were property and slavery was legal. Of course most supporters of Ron Paul are not thinking like this. But Ron Paul and his inner circle have considered this issue for years. Campaign for Liberty the Ron Paul presidential campaign PR machine speaks highly of the ideas of libertarian thinker Ludwig von Mises. The institution named after him, the Ludwig von Mises Institute, was founded by a longtime supporter of Ron Paul, Lou Rockwell. This institute is a think tank with a romantic fascination with the Confederacy and its skewed views on politics and race relations. These views manifested most dramatically in Ron Paul's newsletters that regularly make racist and homophobic asides, as well as belaboring various conspiracy theories. Originally released by reporters at the New Republic, most have gone down the memory hole. This is the biggest reason people choosing to support Ron Paul, including Anons, do not have all the facts in their possession. The gay community went berserk at the suggestion that sodomy might cause AIDS. CBS forced him into an apologetic interview with The Advocate, a homosexual magazine filled with classifieds for pervert prostitutes. The reporter who certainly had an axe to grind and that's not easy with a limp wrist, claimed that Rooney said I've believed all along that most people are born with equal intelligence, but blacks have watered down their genes because the less intelligent ones are the ones that have children. He is also charged with saying blacks drop out of school have illegitimate children and use drugs out of all proportion to their numbers. Rooney denied making the remarks, although only in today's crazed environment could such statements get you into trouble. Liberals promise us release from guilt, points out Murray Rothbard of the Von Mises Institute, and they did abolish sexual guilt, and gave us widespread sodomy, AIDS, promise kitty, 
illegitimacy, and abortion in the bargain. But they imposed a thousand new guilts over racism, sexism, specism, and homophobia. The dread belief that normal sexual conduct is superior to abnormal. Natural law proves that sexuality ought to be restricted to marriage. Between a man and a woman, I guess I have to say these days, approval of anything else means societal disintegration. A mob of black demonstrators led by the Reval Sharpton occupied and closed the Statue of Liberty recently, demanding that New York be renamed Martin Luther and King City to reclaim to for our people. HMM I hate to agree with Al but maybe a name change is in order. Welfaria. Zooville. Rape Town. Dirtburg. Laziopolis. Duke's platform called for tax cuts. No quotas. No affirmative action, no welfare, and no dizzing. Tonight we concede the election, he said, but we will never concede our fight for equal rights for all Americans. To many voters this seems like just plain good sense. Duke carried baggage from his past, but the voters were willing to overlook that. Now homosexuals are being asked to contribute memorabilia to their struggle for civil rights. The Smithsonian is planning an exhibit to advance the gay political agenda. St. Martin was a world-class philanderer who beat up his paramours. He was a flagrant plagiarist with a phony doctorate. He replaced forced segregation in a few states with forced integration in all states. And he was a dedicated socialist. The official line among some conservatives and libertarians is that the civil rights movement started out well but went astray after King's death. In fact it was bad from the beginning. In January I predicted major race riots before this decade ends. I may have to move up my timetable. While Rowan was head of the U.S. Information Agency under LBJ, he found out about the bugging of King's multifarious sexual activities. Documented on tape. A sexual relationship with fellow minister Ralph David Abernathy. See the Rowan book for the exact words which I cannot bring myself to quote. Am I glad I voted in Congress against an expensive federal holiday for this man? Irony. Rowan disagrees with Ron Paul and thinks the words were ribald banter between the men not the men screwing. Criminals who terrorize our cities, in riots and on ever non-riot day, are not exclusively young black males but the largely are. As children they are trained to hate whites, to believe that white oppression is responsible for all black hills, to steal and loot as much money from the white enemy as possible. Order was only restored in law when it came time for blacks to pick up their welfare checks three days after the rioting began. What if the checks had never arrived? No doubt the blacks would have fully privatized the welfare state with continued looting, but they were paid off and the violence subsided. Regardless of what the media tell us, most white Americans are not going to believe they are at fault for what blacks have done to cities across America. The professional blacks may have counted the elites, but good sense survives at the grassroots. Many more are going to have difficulty avoiding the belief that our country is being destroyed by a group of actual and potential terrorists, and they can be identified by the color of their skin. This conclusion may not be fair, but it is for many entirely unavoidable. Given the inefficiencies of what DC laughingly calls the criminal justice system, I think we can safely assume that 95% of the black males in that city are semi-criminal or entirely criminal. We are constantly told that it is evil to be afraid of black men, but it is hardly irrational. Black men commit murders, rapes, robberies, muggings, and burglaries all out of proportion to their numbers. It is an encouraging sign that the end of government as we know it may be near. If government as we know it didn't end in 1994, it's hard to see how Ron Paul plans to make that happen now. Over 15 years later, this is either a portrait of a man caught up for years in racist, homophobia and paranoid political delusions, or a man willing to say anything to manipulate the fears of his base into supporting him. The record is clear. For over two decades Ron Paul published newsletters appealing to the political right, sympathizing with resistance to acknowledge racism and human rights issues as a reality. Ron Paul deliberately sought out and encouraged support for political reactionaries to the civil rights movement, among them the white supremacist Dunn Black. 
founder of Stormfront.org. Not only did Ron Paul accept money from Dunn Black, but, when confronted, refused to return it. There is no doubt Ron Paul knows who Dunn Black is and what he stands for. It was only in 2008, when the New Republic leaked the newsletters that Ron Paul tried to distance himself from his past of cynically manipulating people's fears of cultural change for his political gain. For the past three years Ron Paul has been trying to reinvent himself as a grassroots hero of the people, hoping no one will notice he is still part of the Republican Party. This is further indication of his political dishonesty, even if he could be trusted after at least 20 years of spreading racist bullshit. Being a member of the GOP by definition means many of the things he is promising would be out of his control or blocked by his own party. The evidence instead strongly suggests Ron Paul will say anything to get support and money for his campaign. For those who say but that was years ago, it is unlikely someone would radically change these extreme positions after holding them for over 20 years. Remember he first denied writing any of these, but it's hard to deny the holiday message at the end of one. My wife Carol and our children and grandchildren. Join me in wishing you and your family a wonderful Christmas and a Happy New Year. We do not need Ron Paul to lead us. We do not need Ron Paul for democracy. We do not need to wait until November 2012 for democracy. Democracy is not something you vote for once every four years. Democracy is a way of life. Democracy is happening right now as the world is occupied by the 99%. Do not be tricked into giving up democratic group leadership for a fake father figure politician. We do not need leaders from on high to treat us like small children. Lastly, Ron Paul has this to say about Occupy Wall Street. Uh, you talk quite a bit in your speech about the protests now occurring on Wall Street. What, what do you see as, uh, what do you see as you, your areas of agreement with those people and as president? What would you do to ameliorate their concerns uh, since they seem to be very upset primarily with quote-unquote big business and the banks? Uh, right, and I can't speak for the people out there because I don't know who they are and exactly what they're demonstrating against. I can, I can argue the case for uh, their right to express their outright frustration with what is going on. Some are liberals and some are conservatives and some are libertarians and some are strict constitutionalists. And if you read carefully a lot of what I've written uh, on economic policy over the last 10, 15 years, I talk a lot about this, that eventually we will go bankrupt. Eventually, we will undermine our productivity. We've had no new jobs in the past 10 years, yet we've had 30 million uh, uh, increase in our population. That eventually our jobs would go overseas and the pie would shrink and there would be an aggressive attitude to get a piece of the pie that's no longer there. And this is what we're seeing. So you will have a mixture up there. But as far as the federal government involved in, uh, in the practice of civil disobedience in the various states, it's really up to the states to deal with it. I, I think civil disobedience, uh, if everybody knows exactly what they're doing, is a legitimate uh, uh, is a legitimate effort. It's been done in this country uh, for many grievances. and so. This has been taken as a positive endorsement by Ron Paul supporters in the Occupy movement. But it is not the whole story. Ron Paul's PR machine, Campaign for Liberty, is hostile to Occupy Wall Street, going as far as parroting the accusation the Occupy movement is fake. This is not a misunderstanding or an accident. Ron Paul's own PR machine is pushing lies about Occupy Wall Street, though they appear to do this only on select private lists. Anonymous encourages people to contact Campaign for Liberty and ask them to explain themselves. Anonymous asks that before you make a decision to support Ron Paul, you first read all about the man's past. Remember knowledge is free. It is your right to have all the facts before you make a decision. Do not trust anyone saying you don't need to know Ron Paul's past. They are either a fool or politically dishonest. Remember remember, the 5th of November, in memory of the gunpowder plot. Anonymous sees no reason political lies and treason by anyone should ever be forgot. Knowledge is free. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.